Shalom, shalom. I greet you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be with you wherever you are. And we are so grateful to our Father for another day. And the purpose of having a day is to maximize your walk with the Lord and experience the fullness of God today as far as you can go. And then every day is an opportunity to go higher to make another step forward. Every day is a day to to grow, to increase, to expand. Every day is always different from the previous day. And so your attitude, your mentality, your perception on that very day will become your reality. I pray that you will see the glory of God today because the glory of God is present with you. In Jesus' mighty name, we are so blessed. In Romans chapter 4, verse 8, the Bible tells us that blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. This is another verse that actually emphasizes on the blessedness of the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. I want you to understand what he's talking about here. He says, to whom the man will not impute sin. David won't say, was not saying that this man did not sin. David is saying, you are blessed when God does not impute that sin upon you. So this was the only possible, um, the available a level of understanding of what grace is uh, sometimes at times in fact many times some people will think that this is exactly what it is even today that God do not impute your sins upon yourself and and you think that is the the grace or the meaning of grace we have today I want you to continue to understand that there's a difference between the old and the new. And the light they had then of seeing clearly things is different from what we have today. This is the highest level of this prophet. He looked at it and he said, Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. So he was implying actually sin is so hard to to go, you cannot be without, you cannot live without sin. But the best thing God could do for you would be to not impute sin upon you. If he, he does not impute sin upon you, then you are blessed. Like I said, that was the level of the Old Testament. Because to them, sin was to be covered. Sin was to be forgiven. But it's there in the new testament sin is not covered it is removed it is taken away you're forgiven and that means separated because when jesus came when the eternal son of god became human the impossibilities all the impossible things were now to be possible because he had come himself to do to deal with what man could not do so we are if we are blessed if the man whose sins are not imputed upon him is blessed how much more you that your sins are not just not imputed upon you but taken away removed wiped deleted separated from the, those sins 
because the old man and the whole old man and the body of sin were taken away and you cannot live there no longer you cannot live in the slave of sin you cannot be a slave of sin because the house and the master were taken away and you are free we'll see, we shall see this more in the future but i want you to understand there's a difference between the new testament and the old testament so he's talking about the man whose sins are not imputed upon him and you know the beauty of, of this like i said even if the man has been god just imputes does not impute sins upon this person he says he's blessed he's blessed anyway because the sins are not imputed upon him this is what happened in the old testament this is what happened to david even in his own experiences he realized that god did not judge him you see what god judges people want to be to judge others and people want to be judged as well but i want you to understand that jesus christ when he came he did not judge us he judged the sin itself he judged the sin itself he did not come to judge men he came to judge the sin and actually save the world the Bible tells us that the Son of God did not come to judge the world. He came to save it. If Jesus was to come and judge everybody, look at what would happen. Think about what would happen. And that is why the image of God was revealed in the person of Jesus Christ. The true image of God was revealed in the person of Jesus Christ. Do you see what I'm talking about? The image of God was revealed in the true in the true image of God was revealed in the person of Jesus Christ because Jesus never judged anybody. In fact, he came to save them. He knew how to separate sin from the person. He knew how to separate sin from the sinner. He came to judge sin and that's what he did on the cross. He came to deal with sin and that's what he did on the cross. And therefore that presents to us a different picture of the heart of God. So we realize the heart of God was revealed in the person of Jesus Christ only, not, not through any other person in the Old Testament or in, in the Old Testament. And of course, the, 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 the apostles got it from Jesus Christ. And that's how they were accurate. And to be specific, what Paul is teaching us here. So blessed is the man then whose sins are forgiven, whose sins God, in fact, he says, blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. You see, the Lord had no purpose, had no plan, had no business to impute sin upon you. In fact, he wanted to save you from those sins. He wanted to separate you from those sins. And that's what he did. The, the word forgiveness, the word, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of man. And you know why? Because all those prophets had no ability to separate man from his sin. The Old Testament prophets could not separate man from his sin. The Old Testament people could not separate, they could not save man. You see, that is why salvation is something very, very important. Salvation means you save the person who is a sinner, the person who is about to die, the person who is dead in his sin. He made us alive with Jesus Christ. He did not come to judge us. He came to save us. See, that's different from judging us. So God does not judge you. God wants you to know that he's, he has set you free. He wants you to be separated. He wants you to be saved. He wants you to experience salvation. You know, what would judgment provide anyway? Killing people? Destroying them? No! Jesus did not come to, to judge anybody. He came to save them. So, but because people have not gotten the heart of the Father, the, the heart of the Father that is full of love, which was revealed in, in the person of Jesus Christ, they think 
that somehow God is judging people. God is not judging any man. God saves and heals. And we have seen this in the person of Jesus Christ. The Bible says to wit, the God was in Christ Jesus, reconciling the world with, his, with himself. Reconciling the world with himself. Oh, glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. <laughs> glory. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You know, we have to understand what he talks about when he says, Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. It actually, in the New Testament, everything God has done in Christ Jesus is accredited and imputed to the believer. That's the point. The sum of all happiness, divine fortune, favor, and privileges are now gathered into one divine package and is given to the believer, never to be revoked or taken back. This is what he did for us. He cannot impute sin upon us. Rather, he did something different. Everything he did was accredited to us. And so this gift has not only imputed the righteousness of Christ to the saint, but it is bestowed in such a way that sin cannot be imputed to the believer. So sin cannot be imputed upon you because something else has been put upon you, has been accredited upon you, and that is the righteousness of Jesus Christ. And because of that righteousness, you cannot be condemned. And you cannot be called a sinner. You are called a sin because something else has been given to you. And I want you to remember, sin was given to you or you inherited sin because of Adam. And you cannot inherit sin again because of Jesus, rather. You inherit righteousness. So you have righteousness. Righteousness has been given to you. Righteousness has been imputed upon you. That's what you have. That's the work of Jesus Christ. This is the salvation. You see? Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. There is no way this could happen when Jesus... You see, Jesus did not come to impute sin because in him there was righteousness. Adam gave us what he had, sin and disobedience. But Jesus Christ gave us also what he had. That is righteousness, forgiveness, holiness, redemption. You see? So a saint, a believer, God cannot impute sin upon him. He cannot put, impute sin upon you because it's not even actually from God. It's like when people think of sin, they think sin came from God. Sin did not come from God. Death did not come from God. He's not the originator. He's not the source of sin, of death itself. Glory to God forevermore. Thank God, for he has accredited all that Jesus wrote unto us. Blessed is the man. I want you to see yourself blessed. I want, to know, I want you to know yourself as a blessed person. And you will not impute sin upon you. It's impossible. Shalom, shalom.